Oh, I've got to thank Dan and his team for that. They've done a really good job. So this is Dan and Nick from Movie Madness TV Productions. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. I'd have to admit, look, these guys have been responsible for putting this together, allowing us to put the underwater footage on and the, uh, 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 the commentary, the whole bit, onto the internet for uh, people to uh, enjoy. And I think it's going to create a, a, a new level of uh, what's required or what could be done for freediving. Yeah, well, that's what we were hoping with the comp, that it steps up the level for future comps. So. You're putting yeah. the pressure on us. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Great. Definitely putting the pressure on. Excellent. Well, thank you. Now, you're preparing for a static, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, well, yes. I think you better go and start preparing. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Righto. Good, matey. Thanks, Cheers. Thanks. That was Patrick Falls, the, uh, the main organiser of the Curtis Coast Freediving Challenge. Freedive Challenge. I keep getting that wrong. Yep. Freedive okay. Challenge. So uh, the sun's gone down and the uh, temperature's cooling a little bit. We've changed locations now. We're at a... Uh, of uh, Terry's Swim School, and uh, we're going to, to start the uh, static apnea um, comp part of the competition. And we probably should go through w exactly what static apnea is. And this, to be honest, this is a bit I've been fearing, how to commentate someone holding their breath for five minutes. So, no that, mean feat. That's right. Well, you know, uh, static apnea is a, uh, an interesting thing, and it's probably the most uncomfortable s regime or discipline that we do. And uh, basically, it's face down in the water, how long is your breath hold? It's just a very simple test of breath hold. You take a big breath, you go down. We have safety guys who tap them periodically on the, on the shoulder just to make sure they're still with us. And the free diver will give a little finger or a little thumbs up just to let them know that they're still with us. And if uh, we, we tap them periodically and if they don't respond, we tap them a lot harder. If they don't respond, then it's, we pull them out of the water. It's a very safe uh, uh, sport part of the discipline. And it's an, a great uh, part of the discipline because it teaches a, a diver what actually happens inside his body as he gets lower oxygen and higher carbon dioxide, you, you can get to understand more about his uh, abilities uh, uh, in diving. That's right. It's, uh, it's a very much a, a mental challenge, the static apnea. Yeah, it's, it's really overcoming that urge to breathe and, and pushing forward and pushing forward and realising how well your body adapts to, to holding breath underwater. It's a, it's a real mental challenge and it's a great test for any other aspect of the sport as well. It's really good to practice static apnea and then go off and you can do your pool work and your depth work with that training. Yep. And so it has the same surface protocol as all other uh, events, which is the three steps. It's your facial equipment off, you giving the OK signal and saying, I'm OK, looking at the judge. So it has the same surface protocol as uh, the rest of them. So we should expect some uh, performances. Uh, whew, it's going to be interesting. We'll have three, four, maybe even five minute statics today. So it'll be quite interesting to see how people can really push them themselves. Uh, we've got our two first starters. We've got Trina... Uh, Trina, uh, I've got her name on McKillum. McCullum, McCullum? Uh, from Ireland. She's a warm-up dive, so she's not actually part of the competition, but she's just uh, having a, a more of a um, uh, just a, a practice dive. And then in the other lane, we've got Emily Shaw from um, from Brisbane. So there's about a minute to go now. So we'll um, be actually, nice it's and quiet. just the warm-up diver. Emily's uh, after that. Ah, okay. Yeah. Sorry, my just mistake. Just the warm-up diver, and we do a warm-up diver to test everything's in line. We make sure we've got the uh, the people there. The judges are there the cameras go in the right direction the commentators get their stuff right <laughs> <laughs> and it's a surprising what you come across when you do your warm-up dives you know a rope that shouldn't be there a, a chair that's left you know sometimes people start a, a, an event with a chair to in the deep end of the pool well you've got to get that out well a warm-up dive allows you to get all those things under control and we found ten dollars in the pool for no fins yeah I thought that was okay, enticement we'll, uh, we'll keep it down now oh okay she's just now starting Now, if we speak too loud, the athlete will hear us. So we don't want to speak or say things that may put them off. Try not to keep them off their game. Yeah, as a warm-up dive, we're probably being a little relaxed here. But uh, once again, the athletes do know it's a live, uh, live uh, feed, so uh, they expect us.
Now, I'd say static is probably the most challenging spectator sport in the uh, realms of freediving. Uh, when you get to the point where they're doing six or eight minute statics, well, that's a hard one to uh, commentate. Okay, Trina's so just from time to time She's looking very when the, uh, the static is occurring, what you the find during a diver is asked is to after give a one and a half an okay minutes. signal. Most people get what we call an urge uh, to breathe, where the, the diver mostly uh, a coach will handle that, coach the and them uh, through, build up a when they want to be tapped. Just occasionally, a judge, not sure how things are going, will ask for a, a, another signal. In which case, the athlete would have to give it. And she's up. Okay. Okay, she's completed a surface protocol. Looks very happy. <laughs> so from when the yeah, look like airways a dive for Trina. So from when the airways come out of the water, the athlete till the end of thirty seconds cannot be touched by a coach or a safety diver. A single touch, a handshake, and done by mistake, will result in a disqualification. <laughs> okay, and that's a white card for Trina. Two minutes twenty-five. Two minutes twenty-five seconds for Trina. Well done. Yeah, yeah sorry. Um, if the coach isn't in the water, the official safety has to be there, and then we have to start making calls. Yep. So if okay, you've got a coach in the water, you don't have to have the, the call. Too easy. Okay. okay. So I'll just, yep. Unless we request it. Yep. Good job. There's about five or six stopwatches there. They all wrap around the, uh, the main power cord to everything. So we can't get them off the wall. What? <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> Oh, yeah, stop it, please. Yeah, what? <laughs> Benny, Ben, is there any way we can actually get underwater footage? Uh, yeah, there should be. I've got the underwater. Yeah. Yeah. Because it'll be nice if the guy, once we get the three in, they can walk along and you know, prep, 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 prep so one. Need, uh, second, we've got two outfits coming on. Yeah, so we need a judge in lane two. Yeah. Emily's in A and. Um, Emily's in A and. Okay, so, no, no go in the water. water. Uh, okay. If they're not, then we have to start passing signals from one minute before they're, um, oh, no, from me. there. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah, give us a signal, so, or, no, we do, do it. We do it. Yes, I think you are Sorry? in the water. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. You're in that lane there. Um, okay, so we've got two performances there. Yeah. Okay, we've got a few minutes here before the uh, the first official dive, and we've got Richard Frost here. Uh, Richard, sorry. There you go, mate. Good, man. Very good. Uh, Richard has uh, got a, a, a cause that's close to his heart that the uh, Curtis Coast Freediving Challenge is supporting, and we want to uh, uh, raise awareness for for Deborah. Richard, can you tell us a little bit about Deborah? Yeah, mate. Still your mic. Yeah, so this is about uh, Deborah, which is supporting EB Epidoma Losa Belosa, which is basically a uh, deficiency in uh, making a skin protein which binds the skin so it causes horrific uh, third degree like blisters on kids mainly uh, with the most horrific cases because uh, they don't often live that long it uh, happens in their esophagus anywhere where there's friction or heat and it's a yeah, terrible affliction to have and there's three different levels of it my sister has one of the least levels of uh, severity and 
it, yeah, really is terrible, and we're just looking to get awareness and money for anyone yeah, willing to help us out here. Um, yeah. Good. So we're going to have a bucket go around uh, at some stage? Yeah, we've got the bucket going around just to throw some notes in, anything which we'll do, because it's providing money for bandages and creams. Just uh, the quality of life is that reduced that that's what it's come down to. There's no cure yet. I'm, I know they're working on one, but... Okay, yeah. so is this the uh, the logo on the back of my shirt here? Yeah, someone's going to okay. turn around and have a here look Here we go, point it out. If we can focus on the Deborah... Oh, you have to stop moving though, mate. So how's that? You got that now? Good. And they can Google that and find this organisation? They can Google, depending on the country they're in, deborah.org.au for Australia and whatnot. And give you an example of what it is like my sister who really wanted to go, still outgoing, still does everything, tennis, skiing, but if she plays tennis she'll have a handful of blisters or go skiing she will have a boot worth of blisters once she takes it off. It's horrendous. She's uh, yeah, is happy to yeah, do okay. the sports but it hurts yep. her. Yeah. Okay, I understand that. Well, thanks for bringing that to attention. And it's something I've never heard of before, but uh, no, no, we need to uh, support this. It's a good cause. Yeah, thank you very much. Good. Okay, thanks for commenting. It's been hilarious. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Um, thanks <laughs> for helping out everyone the whole competition. Richard? Cheers, Ben. Cheers. Okay, we've just got under three minutes to go now to the first uh, two people. We've got Emily Shaw from Australia and PJ from Iran up first. Now, uh, PJ, once again, is up for a national record. Is that correct, Ben? That's right. If he nails a clean dive here, it'll be the second Iranian national record in history. Okay, so he needs a dive with no penalties. That's right, completely white card performance, white card no performance. penalties. Yep, good. That's right. Two minutes ago, we'll uh, be quiet and let them concentrate now. Okay. seconds. Twenty seconds. Okay, our first two competitors are underway. In uh, lane A, we have Emily Shaw uh, being coached by Amber Burke, and the judge is John Wright. Uh, lane B, we have Pejman Siavoshi from Iran uh, being, uh, uh, he's got no coach by the look of it. Being, being coached, coached by, by Trent, he's uh, Trent Norris. Ah, okay. Yeah. And judged by Fran Rose. This is. PJ's second performance in an Ada Freediving competition and if he gets a white card performance this will be his second Iranian national record. And while we're here we'd just like to thank Pat Bait and Tackle for the uh, support that they've been giving uh, freediving here in uh, Gladstone. Uh, they've always seem to come up with uh, some support uh, for these competitions and um, 
They are just a, a, a good local business who are supporting local athletes. We'd like to thank them. That's right, and they've graciously donated uh, mast snorkel and fins for the, uh, for the competition. Now, our first two competitors have both uh, gone without wetsuits. Normally in a static apnea you get very cold, but uh, the conditions here in the pool are, are, are very warm in the water. We're at Terry Swim School in Gladstone, and uh, the water temperature is very nice, so the guys have gone without wetsuits. Yeah, and you notice the coaches are giving the athletes uh, taps. This is to uh, you know, keep them, um, to keep us and all understanding that they are still lucid. And as a person doing a static, uh, the taps can help you pace where you're at. If you just go three minutes without a single tap, it can be a little bit disturbing. You don't know if you've done one minute or two minutes or three. So uh, they can help you pace your, uh, your static out. in static apnea you find the role of the coach is very important uh, it's, it's very much a mental game so it's very easy just to come up and take a breath of air so the role of the coach is just to encourage the free diver just to go a little bit further uh, make sure they're not floating all over the place uh, just talking to them giving them comforting tips um, to being a little more firm if you need to if they look like they're um, about to give in but they've still got a bit to go and then periodically telling them in fact, uh, quite often coaching is, uh, involves also uh, saying things that constantly encourage them on and even distracts them from their urge to breathe. Okay, we're coming up to three minutes now. Both athletes are looking very nice, very comfortable. Here we go, we've just had three minutes. Okay, we have a little contraction on one of the one of the athletes there on Emily. The body has an involuntary method, uh, um, a signal to breathe, and uh, it's called a contraction, where the, uh, ab the um, diaphragm contracts. And that doesn't mean the end of oxygen. It just means the body is saying there's too much carbon dioxide and got to do something about it. Now Amber's coaching Eamon to uh, bring her hands up, just to get ready for that last stage of the dive and put herself in a good position so her arms are ready, her feet are down, so when she comes up she doesn't have to move. 3.35 now. So, Pedgeman in the far lane there, he's looking very strong there. He's looking solid as a rock. Yeah. Now he has done uh, uh, plus four minute breath holds and he's done one plus five minute breath hold in the past in training. So we're not sure how he'll go tonight. Of course competition is a bit different because of the, the nerves that are involved. Looks like Emily's putting up a good fight now. You can see she's having that urge to breathe. Quite difficult. Coaching by Amber Burke. Yeah, he's noticed the coach is focusing her on how she's going to come out of the water. Emily's up to 4 minutes 30 now. Okay, an M surface. She's breathing. She's looking good. And she's nailed the surface protocol. Strong surface protocol. Yes. Very nice. Yep. Very nice. Okay, here we go. Pigeon. She looks solid as a rock. PJ looks like he's putting a fight. And there he's up. He's up. He's breathing. Come on, PJ. Another Iranian record. Okay. Mask is off. He's a little hypoxic. Yeah, he's uh, right on the edge there. Notice he's being coached to breathe. <laughs> and Emily has got a white card. Emily has had a successful dive for four, th four minutes and 34 seconds. <laughs> okay, now we look back towards PJ. The judges are deliberating. And we can't see what's going on here. Now it looked at Judge he Frank might Rose. have uh, double dipped, dipped his mouth afterwards. Okay. So Judge Fran Rose is uh, deliberating. The tension, we don't know what's going on with PJ. Is it an Iranian record or not? Thank you. Well done, Steve. 
Let's see if uh, the real estate, the benefit of the doubt, goes the athlete. And he's got it. Another Iranian record. Yep. Congratulations to Pejman Siavoshi of Iran. His second Iranian national record. <laughs> okay, fresh out of the pool, we have Emily Shaw from Brisbane, who's just successfully done a well done. four minute and 34 well second static. What was yep. the time frame? Excellent, congratulations. How did that go? Ooh. Uh, not too bad actually. Static's usually my least favourite discipline, so yeah, I was happy to do a performance that I'm um, yeah that I was happy with, especially after coming off doing the no fins this morning. Absolutely, it's it's quite a, a stretch to do two dives in one day, but you've um, you've come back and you've nailed it. Is that your personal best? Uh, yeah, pretty much. It's the best I've done in water. I've done slightly longer, just dry training on land. Excellent. Okay, well, congratulations. A great uh, great end of the day. Thank they can you go very and much. Go and have some food finally. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> very good static and very good surface protocol. Absolutely. She looked solid as a rock when she came up. It's uh, quite good. We, uh, we don't get a great deal of uh, opportunity to train static in Brisbane. So the guys that are put in today are, are really doing uh, an amazing effort so far. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Especially PJ. That's, uh, that's only his third or fourth time in the water doing a static. Yep. Oh, was it? We'll just grab PJ now, just for a couple of quick words. Just wait till he puts his pants on first. Yep. Okay. Come on over, PJ. You don't need the shirt. I'm sure we'll have ladies requesting, you know, no shirts for some of our performers. The whole world wants to see more of PJ. <laughs> Congratulations, that's her second Iranian record. Thank you very much. How did it feel the whole way through? Uh, it was great, but uh, it wasn't my best personal record. But it was good because it was uh, official. Uh, that's the thing with uh, competitive free diving. Uh, in, in competitions, there's a lot more nerves. Your heart rate's up a lot higher and you're stressed. You might get dehydrated. So it's much, it's much better to, to do a solid performance. And uh, that was an Iranian record too. So congratulations. So you went off to a strong start there. You looked very good right through to about three minutes. You know, how was how was it feeling then? Uh, it was good. I was very calmed down and uh, everything was good. Good. And how about when you finished there? How was that going? Uh, I don't remember good, but... <laughs> yeah. So it was a bit tough there at the end there. Yeah, it was a bit yeah. tough, a bit hard. Okay. Yeah. All right. I understand. All right. Well, congratulations on an excellent performance. So now some food. <laughs> Time to eat. Yeah. Good. Congratulations, PJ. Great, thank you. That was a Pejman Sivoshi from Iran. His second uh, national record for the day. A pretty pretty good day for PJ. Uh, we have a small break now at uh, six. 6.45. In six minutes' time, we've got Patrick Falls and Jack Hatfield, and I'm going to hang up the microphone for a moment and go do some judging. Okay, well, um, let's uh, have a look at uh, uh, some more of our sponsors. Okay, so let's have a look at this one, shall we? Absolutely. Adreno are one of the largest uh, retailers in, uh, online retailers in the world. They're based in Bullangabra in Brisbane. Uh, the website has just been revamped, I believe. It's <laughs> www. Adrenaline. <laughs> not no, adrenaline, no, no adrenaline, not it's all adreno. No. Adreno.com.au. <laughs> and it has uh, quite a few sections there. We've got a, uh, a spear fishing, free diving section. There's a scuba section, snorkeling. There's also a wetsuit warehouse, which is uh, the black forest of wetsuits. Have you been in there, Ben? I have. I've, I've been known to get lost in there for several hours and not come out. <laughs> when we go to close the shop, we have to send out search parties occasionally. <laughs> it's, it's an absolute labyrinth in there. It's, it, they've got everything in there. It's, it's an amazing place and it's a free diver's dream. Yeah. And then you move through to the next one, which is the swimwear. That's uh, a very ladies oriented area, that yeah, is. The, swim, the swimwear shack. It's, yeah. uh, all, the, all the latest designs of, uh, of, of men's and women's swimwear, all the latest brands. And the new one, the most recent one, is Adreno Tri, which is uh, Brisbane's first tri athlete only store. 
That's right. So all the triathlon gear, so your, your beautiful carbon bikes, uh, all your all your lycra gear for all those mammals out there. The middle-aged men in lycra can can kit up and and uh, ride around from coffee shop to coffee shop. That's it. Hit the road on the coffee shop trail. <laughs> Great. Okay, we've got a bit under four minutes to go now for our next round of, of um, people. So um, I better uh, hang up the microphone okay. and just go get my position. Good. Okay. <coughs> On this next uh, heat, as we're running them as heats, we have uh, in the far lane Jack Hatfield from Sydney. You can tell him with the Sydney Freedivers cap. And uh, the next lane over, we have Jonathan Chong, and he's from Singapore. He trains in uh, Brisbane with the Brisbane Freedivers. And uh, the next lane here in front of us is Patrick Falls. Patrick is, of course, the uh, the young organizer of this competition and uh, an up and coming oh, athlete in the area as well. Do we have a. Um oh, two and a half almost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, probably the one of the major things, and I'm guessing. All athletes will have their own little systems, but you want to get into a frame of mind where your heart beat, your heart rate drops. And uh, you can do this by uh, relaxing, sort of a, a deeper or slower breathing. You need to be in a particular mental state. You don't need to be thinking about action uh, events. Now, when you see a, uh, an athlete start having contractions in static apnea, this doesn't mean they're at the end of their oxygen supplies. In fact, usually the first contraction comes uh, before they actually uh, have much uh, lower oxygen at all. It comes mainly as a result of carbon dioxide buildup. And uh, the body at this point in time realizes that the, uh, the diver is doing some diving and uh, he makes some changes. And one of the changes is to uh, bring on some contractions. But there's quite a few other changes that occur. For example, the constriction of the blood flow to the extremities, the lowering of the heart rate, and uh, a, uh, quite often, and it is the case with divers who are well trained, an injection of uh, red blood cells filled with hemoglobin into the bloodstream that uh, um, causes the uh, body to be able to carry more oxygen. This is called the mammalian dive reflex. You put all those things together and it's a great assistant to the athlete. An untrained person has very little of it together on this, but the more training a person does, the more this dive reflex will kick in. 30 seconds away now. Three athletes are down. So the world record on static apnea for men is Stefan Misford with 11 minutes 35. The Australian record is held by Walter Stein for men at 8 minutes and 1 second. For women, Jodie Fisher at 6 minutes and 9 seconds.
It's a very important thing that an athlete gets very relaxed in the water. Any tense muscles, of course, is burning oxygen, burning energy. So you'll notice how they're hanging, and uh, the coaches are often coaching them to relax certain muscles up and down their back, trying to get them focusing on uh, no usage of energy and no usage of oxygen, or very little. The judges, Harry, have uh, two stopwatches, and one is for the overall time, and the other one is to time the surface protocol. Of course, they need to do the three steps of surface protocol in 15 seconds, and then they need to remain out of the water, conscious, I mean, airways out of the water, conscious, for the remaining 15 seconds up to 30 seconds. At that point, the d uh, performance is deliberated by the judge. So they're at 3.45 at the moment, or thereabouts, because they went down slightly different times. Okay, we have uh, Patrick up, strong service protocol. And Jack's up at the other end there. You can see Jonathan there is at a contraction. He's been asked to signal after the contraction, after the blowing of bubbles. Four and a half minutes. So uh, Jack Hatfield down the far end, 402, white card. Down a five minute, yeah. He's down a signal. Okay, the coach has got him thinking about coming up. There he is, he's up. So he's got his uh, hook breaths there to actually get his blood pressure up. And look, it's very fast <laughs> surface protocol then. Looking at the judge. <laughs> okay, so you could see there the strong contractions that the person went through before he actually finally came up. So this, uh, is a, they were going some minutes before he did come up. So we're looking at the fact that the contraction doesn't mean He's at the end of his oxygen. And each athlete has to work out 
what is the signal? It's not a contraction, but there are other signals. And, you know, different athletes have different, uh, different um, things they look for. Some people have sight changes, which do indicate a lowering of the oxygen or a close to the edge of the oxygen. What it was. Okay, uh, look, that was an interesting uh, episode, having three going at one time. Yeah, I had to run off and do some quick judging and then uh, race back to the microphone again. I just watched uh, uh, Jack Hatfield from Sydney do a beautiful four minutes and, and two seconds static. Uh, and I had to watch Jonathan Chong in, the, in lane B do a very uh, comical uh, surface protocol. He's, he's renowned for being a bit of a galah when he comes up in surfaces. Yeah, and it was uh, quite of an action one. He was doing a lot of contracting, blowed a few bubbles, but was able to uh, indicate that he was still lucid and he got through with a, a white card. So Absolutely. That was good. He, he was putting out every warning signal to, to the safety divers that he could possibly think of and uh, then came up with a very solid recovery. And the judges did say, I want a signal at a certain time when you started blowing bubbles. He gave a signal, carried on. So it was a, a, a very well run static. That's right. He was lucid the whole way through. Good. Let's go and uh, visit one of our other sponsors again. Just have a quick chat about... Uh, Apne Australia. Apne Australia. Yeah, now Apne Australia has uh, become a very successful organisation in Australia. Some years ago, Erez Petus arrived in Australia from Israel. Now, he's a uh, former record holder. Former world record holder back in uh, the very early days of, of freediving. Yep. Uh, he set a, uh, a, n a constant weight no-fins record. I think it was 50 metres yep. at the time, ma many years ago now. He moved to Australia and he started up the, the Apne Australia Freediving School. He's a former aider international uh, instructor and has moved on to, to form his own company in Australia. He runs uh, courses all around Australia with, with various instructors and he also does uh, holidays to Tonga and do uh, humpback whale watching. For, and that's for definitely on one of my to-do lists. Oh, absolutely. I've seen some of the photos the coming footage back. and it photos is amazing. awesome. Yeah. Okay, now um, Apnea Australia have put forward a, uh, a course, a dive course, and the t-shirts. And they've also provided shirts as well. So thank you very much to Errors and all the, the, the crew at Apnea Australia. Now Brisbane Freedivers, we have one of their uh, instructors up here training with us regularly. Uh, with Apnea Australia, yeah, Lewis Jones, he's a uh, he's a Errors' right hand man. He's one of the main instructors with Apnea Australia. He trains with us down in Sydney. Yeah, he uh, got a... Sydney, where am I thinking? Dean Brisbane. <laughs> yeah. He travels all around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he got a good spread in the newspaper recently for uh, basically instructing freediving and able to do uh, over 150 metres in the pool. That's with the fin on? That's right. The MX uh, newspaper that's handed out in all the, uh, the train stations around the country uh, did, a, did a profile on, on Lewis and had some uh, wonderful photos of, of uh, himself and his, uh, his uh, girlfriend, Olga, which is his uh, beautiful carbon monofin. His girlfriend is the monofin. Huh? Gotcha. Oh, I'm going, well, I didn't see that. And then I ah. There's no room in, a, in Lewis's life for anyone else, really. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Okay. Who we got coming up next? All right. Um, I think I'd better give this back to you and uh, settle on over into a, a chair over there. 
Okay, we've got How long before the top time? We have uh, three and a half minutes okay. until the, our next three performers, which are the last for the night. We've got uh, Nigel Stevens in lane A, Cameron Sutherland in lane B, and Richard Frost in lane C. They're all local guys, uh, so this would be a bit of a Gladstone uh, uh, free dive off, I guess you'd call it. All three locals, all training together. So it'll be interesting to see how they all do. Just got Jack here before the other guys start off. Jack Hatfield, you just completed a, a successful four minute and two second uh, static. Mate, tell us how you, you're going through. I know your coach mentioned steak at about three minutes and you started tapping your head. What was going through your mind? I was really damn hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Freedivers tend to not eat for about four to six hours before a static apnea, so I feel your pain, brother. I feel you. So tell us about your static. When did you get your first urge to breathe? Uh, well, I usually, I, usually, I usually get my contractions probably about minute 30 odd, which is pretty low compared to most other people, but it's, yeah, today was a bit, yeah, a little bit more stressed out and dicey and no fins earlier on, so uh, yeah, it's starting to get a bit, about around the three minute mark, I was feeling pretty a- pretty average, you know, feeling a bit more to come up, but at the same time, just want to s- just keep it white and just make sure I get into it. It was a pretty solid dive under a fairly testing day today, and my arm's getting sore from holding up the microphone, so I'll say thank you very much, and <laughs> it's a long way up. All right, thank you very much, Jack Hatfield. So the last three statics of today, and then it is beer o'clock, straight after. Richard Frost concentrating, trying to relax as much as possible. One minute. There's Cameron Sutherland. Uh, he competed also just recently in Brisbane and did a very good personal best down there. Well over five minutes. And closest to us here is Nigel Stevens. Nigel unfortunately got a red card just in his uh, dynamic no fins, just did his protocol out of time. Hopefully he can um, complete his surface protocol correctly this time. All three of them are down and started their, uh, their static for today. So a shot of Richard underwater. He'll be trying to relax every muscle in his body and trying to just empty his head of all thoughts. There's Richard with the uh, wetsuit on halfway down just to try and cope with the, the heat of the pool. And we've got Nigel Stevens here and with a very, very muscly safety diver. He's in good hands there. Look at the guns on that guy. Tell you what, if I was going to get rescued, he'd be it.
they're still holding their breath. Let's check again and they're still holding their breath. Joining me in the commentary booth is Jonathan Chong, just out of the pill. Jonathan, what are your thoughts on the, the event today? Um, when you guys went on Saturday, I think that Cameron mentioned that he's going to go for a six. He had a PB of um, 602 in the Brisbane comp uh, in April, so I think he's going to do really well with this comp today. Nigel has also done, I think, four and a half minutes, so I reckon that he's going to do really well too. Good stuff. I think we've got all the Gladstone guys lined up in a row. I think they're fairly competitive. And they're still holding their breath. Looks like Nigel's uh, getting away a little bit with the current. And his uh, super muscly safety diver is uh, wrapping him up in his big arms and bringing him back in. Gratuitous bottom shot of uh, safety diver Patrick Falls. Okay, we've just hit three minutes and they're all looking very strong. Sutherland, he's just starting to get some contraction, so he's definitely feeling that urge to breathe. I wouldn't want to be him right now. That's Nigel Stevens, his head's going a little bit purple. He's uh, getting a little bit more hypoxic, but he's still strong. He's just given another signal. And there we've got, we've got Richard Frost. Okay, Nigel's up. Nigel Stevens is up. I'm not actually sure if he did a circuit protocol or not. Richard is up. Richard Frost is up in lane C. You've got their in-water cam. Okay, he's a little bit wobbly, but he did a good surface protocol. Very solid surface protocol. So the one Gladstone guy left is Cameron Sutherland in lane B in the middle there. Camera in the middle is looking very solid. Okay, Nigel Stevens had a white card performance of 4 minutes and 12 seconds. Great effort there from the local guy. Cameron's looking, he's blowing out some bubbles. Okay, they've just brought him up. Safety guys weren't happy that he was uh, under his own control. So what happens now is we get the safety divers to hold them above the water and the athlete will start breathing in a few seconds. A few moment momentarily uh, didn't know where he was and now he's back now. And uh, wondering why everyone's smiling at him. <laughs> So unfortunately that'll be a disqualification for uh, Cameron Sutherland, but it's a very good dive until that <laughs> point. <laughs> 534, uh, Cameron did, but he will be disqualified.
Well done, nice try. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll quickly have a chat with Jonathan Chong now. Uh, just did his uh, dive 15 minutes ago. Jono, uh, your dive was uh, five minutes and 20 seconds. And 20 seconds. Uh, I've I've seen quite a few of your performances these days, and you, you never fail to make me laugh. You have the most amazing surface protocol. Tell us about the, the last few seconds, what was going through your head. Um, at the end, I, yeah, I started to have massive contraction, so I was, at the end I was tossing up between um, coming up or going for it. At the end I just decided, yeah, I should come up. And the white car was uh, the main thing on my mind at, at that time. You were blowing out a lot of air beforehand, which is always a sign that someone is in a little bit of trouble. And so the judges were quite concerned and getting ready to, to pounce on you, pretty much. But you uh, pulled it all together at the end, and, and uh, quite frankly, I'm astonished. <laughs> it, was a, it was a fantastic dive and a really good effort. Um, and your surface protocol has been really nailed lately. You've, you've been doing some really solid practice with that. Tell us about your surface protocols. Uh, yeah, so I've been the last competition I took part in was in April in uh, Brisbane, and I realized that I didn't have a very strong surface protocol, so for the previous last few months, I've been working every single dive I come up, and I aim to get a very solid surface protocol. I just want to get in my muscle memory, and well, I guess it paid off. <laughs> Jonathan lives to fight another day. Oh, congratulations, mate! Great dive and a great day for you. Very uh, successful day. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow in the pool. Any any uh, big big things planned tomorrow? Um, well, I'm planning to go for 130 tomorrow in the dynamic no fins. Oh, sorry, dynamic. You've already done no fins. <laughs> yeah. Very hypoxic at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, so with fins, I'm, um, the last time I, the last big swim I did was uh, 130, and I did that in Brisbane. So that was around about six weeks back. So I'm trying to, hoping to replicate that result again. Yeah. And what's the uh, Singapore record at the moment? Um, currently it's at 101, 101 meters, and that was set in April a couple of months back. <laughs> So you're going to give that a fair nudge? Yeah, I'm hoping to. Hopefully. Okay, well, all the best for tomorrow. Go and uh, rehydrate and eat and sleep tonight, Well, and we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, thanks a lot, Beth. See you tomorrow. Great, cheers. Okay, that was Jonathan Chong, uh, a Singaporean uh, competitor that, that uh, trains with us in Brisbane. That's it for the competition today. Uh, we've had, uh, by and large, we've had a very successful day. All, all, um, all divers are very happy. A um, couple of little hiccups here and there, but that's, that's the nature of a competition. We'll um, quickly grab a couple of people at, and talk to the last few guys and then uh, we'll wrap things up for today. We're just chasing a couple of uh, athletes at the moment, but in the meantime, we've managed to grab Terry, who, uh, geez, I'm sounding like a New Zealander being around you Kiwis all day. Uh, That's good for you. Terry Swim School. That's the location right today. Yeah. Uh, Terry, thank you so much for the, the fantastic facility. It's a, it's a wonderful pool. Um, all the guys have been raving on about sort of how, how no lovely and the warm the water is, and uh, it's been a really good environment for static. So uh, what, tell us a little bit about the stuff you do here at Terry Swim School. Well, we um, teach children from four months of age right through to adults, so, um, and we go 12 months of the year, which is really important to keep our kids learning how to swim. I agree with that. You know, there's, you, it's no good, especially children, they've got to learn that muscle memory to keep it going, you know, it's got to, to sort of stick in. And um, it looks fantastic premises here, you Thank know, you it's much. really good. And uh, whereabouts actually is this? 
Um, Terry Swim School is located at Four Wollonga Place, um, Gladstone, behind Barney Point Butcher Shop there. So um, we're fully enclosed and we, we're heated at 32 degrees. So, yeah, and That's I agree. It's fantastic. A complex. Yeah. Well, look, thank you very much for the support of the sport. This is a new sport and Terry's been really accommodating and helped us to, uh, to allow these premises here for our static competition. So much appreciated. No problem. It's my pleasure. Right. Thank you. Thanks, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Well, wow. that was uh, an exciting uh, static session. Yeah, a bit more exciting than static normally is. Yeah, well, sure. normally it's one person at a time and, uh, you know. Yeah, it's, it's not very often you have a competition where you have three people going all at once. And I think it was interesting that the last three were all local boys and I think they were sort of eyeing each other off beforehand. <laughs> and and uh, I think who was Richard came up with the chocolates in the end. Yeah, he did come up. And you know what? He did an a announced time of uh, four minutes. One, was it four minutes? 4.30. Uh, he announced 4.30. So that means he had to get over that not to incur a penalty. He got 4 minutes 31 seconds. That's a horrible thing to go through your head, knowing that you have to last that long before you, you get penalised. Yep. Lucky he lasted one second after his uh, announced time. Yep. Yep. Good. How, Patrick, what are your thoughts on how the day went today? You look tired, mate. Oh, the day went great. And, yeah, I am tired. And you did a great job on commentating. I I couldn't have done it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, give us coffee, you know, and a microphone. Oh, I know, I'll give a new coffee does, Chucky. <laughs> cool. And look, how did your static go? Uh, yeah, my static went great. Oh, I didn't push it at all. Yep, fair enough. You had a lot on your mind? Not really. Oh, no. oh well, excellent. <laughs> I, I zoned out for three minutes. So, no, that was really good. What, you went asleep, relaxed for three minutes, and then you come back to reality now? Yeah, I had some minor contractions, but that was nothing. Okay. I come up and pretty much did one hook breath and yeah, Great. smashed the service protocol. So Okay, thank you good. very much. Excellent. Yeah, thanks for commentating. Good. No, I'm doing you now, Fran. <laughs> Here we have head, head judge uh, Fran Rose from New Zealand, but a local girl now. Um, did a magnificent job today judging uh, all, all day. Luckily, you got out of the commentating duties. Yes, I did. I was a little bit uh, overwhelmed with my schedule for the day. But um, you guys have just done a spectacular job. I'm very proud of you, boys. Thank you very much, but we're not letting you escape that easy. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, when I arrived in uh, Gladstone four years ago, was I surprised, as I left Sydney, Sydney Freedivers, I was surprised to find Fran Rose, who already, had, who already was renowned in uh, running freediving um, institutions in New Zealand, had settled down. How lucky was I? How lucky were the people of Gladstone? Well, I'd actually settled down a lot earlier than that 20 years ago with Paul, but <laughs> settling <laughs> in, the, in the town uh, four years ago, and I think you came about three years. So you came about a year after me. Okay. So, yeah, we had the, um, the Curtis Coast Spearfishing Club was already set up, and I brought the training, the free dive training to the, to the club, and we grew the club from there. And... Um, and it's been going ever since, and what? thanks to your help and keeping the momentum going. Tell you what, Fran, you've done a magnificent job. It's some pretty good divers here, and the safety team and all the helpers that have been here have all been under your tutelage at some point or another. Yeah, it's and, uh, oh, yeah, I've been it's to her training sessions. I managed to stay on the side of the pool as she cracks the whip and gets them doing length after length, and <laughs> one up, one below, and, you know, they come up and they look like they're going to throw up for a second, and then they get it together, and off she sends them again, you know. Yeah, pretty hard taskmaster. That's for a fitness orientation, yeah. It not was. so much blackout, a near blackout. Yeah, it was a bit... <laughs> Sure that we get that one right. It was for a, uh, a spearfishing fitness thing, and it was a, just a great thing for the spearfishers at the time to uh, be able to get their fitness up with with their breath holds and their hard swimming at the same time. So it was really it was a good good thing for the uh, Gladstone Spearfishing Club. Because let's be frank here, spearfishermen aren't renowned as being elite athletes, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen what they eat. They're a lot better than scuba divers. <laughs> oh, don't don't even start me there, Fran. <laughs> no, Sorry, <laughs> no, Fran, you've done a fantastic job up here and all the guys are well trained up. The, they've all got you to thank for it. All, all you guys have, have built a, a fantastic freediving community up here. And hopefully after, after this weekend they'll go from strength to strength even more. Yep. Well, thank you, Ben, because you've kept uh, freediving alive, the organisation in Australia, for quite some time now. And that's no hard, uh, that's no hard task. No, it's not a hard yeah, task. It's that's, easy. That's no easy task. So, you know, a lot of it is 
from you and your hard work and your dedication and passion as well. So this wouldn't be happening if you hadn't kept the ball rolling. Well, I think when you find a pe bunch of people who are more passionate about the sport, they're really interested in growing it and growing it and growing it. Then we're, we're, yeah. We've got exponential growth now and, and um, it, it's only going to go upwards from here. Yeah. The only way is up. Be 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Great, thanks, Brad. We must be pretty close to signing off now, Ben. I think so. The, the pool's been cleared. They're putting the covers on. Yeah. I don't plan on getting wet tonight. Yeah, and I don't plan Unless to get in stuck in here. Four X. Four X. Wow. I'm in Queensland. <laughs> That's what we do. Uh, yep. Once again, thank you for all the guys today that have helped out, uh, all our sponsors, and uh, oops, sorry, I got to get my notes right. I'm running out of hands here. Particularly the audio visual guys today, um, Dan and Nick, uh, Movie Madness TV, Movie Madness Productions done an absolutely stellar job putting putting us on air and making us look half decent that's no mean feat in its own right i agree i totally agree and uh look we've had a lot of uh people uh from sydney and brisbane and even from la uh letting us know that uh, they've had a really good time watching this uh live footage that we've had absolutely the australian freediving uh, association facebook page got over 2,000 hits in the last couple of hours whoa that's fantastic a lot of traffic yeah <laughs> there's a movie madness logo now uh, what time do we get off uh, the ground tomorrow, Ben? I think the first top's at 10 o'clock. So we've got uh, dynamic uh, with fins tomorrow. So you see a lot of dolphin action tomorrow. It's going to be great. Yep. You're going to see some big dives. And um, Well, the monofin action is always interesting. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's where you see some big action, lots of uh, longer swims. And it's a completely different swimming action than the, uh, than by the no fins. Hang on. John Wright, the judge is just auctioning off my watches. John, they're mine. <laughs> Put them back. <laughs> All right, so we are back at the uh, Gladstone Aquatic Centre tomorrow. 10 o'clock tomorrow time. Uh, I'm Ben Noble. This is Wayne Judge. Thanks for uh, listening to us today. Thanks for all your tweets and messages on Facebook. Yep, and uh, see you here tomorrow. We're going to have a ball. Absolutely. All right, mate. All right. Thanks, Cheers. Wayne. Thank you.